Now, coming back to the changes. September 2022, three professional papers, the optional one, Advanced Performance Management, Advanced Financial Management, and Advanced Audit and Assurance. Okay, These are the three papers where the changes are applicable for September 2022 attempt, which means now your exam is not of 100 marks. Oh, what are you saying, sir? 100 marks? Yes, technical marks are not 100 anymore now. Technical marks previously used to be 96 marks with four professional marks, if you remember. But now your technical marks are 80. So it's good, which means the technical knowledge that you require is just for 80 marks. This means the paper has become easier or difficult, easier or difficult. The paper has become easier because the technical side marks are 80. So what are the 20 marks? Your professional skills. If you are professional, if you develop the basic professional skills, if you understand the basic professional skills, which means you can pass the paper with ease because 20 marks doesn't require the textbook knowledge. 20 mark doesn't require the knowledge of the models. 20 mark doesn't require calculation aspects. So what is that? These are professional marks. So I would say 80 technical marks, 20 professional marks. Now listen very carefully. Those 20 professional marks are related to the professional skill and behavior which basically is divided into four things. Number one, communication. Now here, those who have given SBL, they have an edge this time. Only this time I'm saying, okay? After, after this attempt, uh, uh, everybody will uh, uh, cover these things in every paper, so no edge. But right now, those who gave SBL previously, they have a bit edge. Whether they appear in AFM, APM or AAA, just because these skills were introduced in SBL. Okay. So the lucky ones who gave SBL last time, only this attempt they have uh, a edge because they are already familiar with these words. Now, it's the communication, it's the analysis and evaluation, professional skepticism and commercial acumen. These are the four skills which are part of professional skills. I'll discuss these ones. I move ahead. But right now, the point I want to make is 80 are the technical marks and 20 relates to these four skills. Uh, and if you are able to understand the four skills, definitely you will be able to grab marks easily. And like this, I must say your passing of APM will become easier. Yes, easier. Okay, so this is the paper structure change. Changes in the topics. See, section A. Section A, uh, as I said that in section A, now I'm coming back to syllabus, okay? This is syllabus. Listen to me, this is syllabus. This is syllabus section A. So section A, syllabus section A, uh, now includes the component of risk and uncertainty, which was previously part of the uh, which was previously part of section B and as I said one section has been removed so that became part of section A. So this is the very obvious change. Other than that, other than that this is an addition to section A of the syllabus and a very important word is beyond budgeting. Now beyond budgeting has been introduced back into the syllabus. This, this was something which was not in the syllabus previously. In fact, it was previously, then it was not, and then it came back here. So you can see here, a um, uh, uh, obvious change is that in evaluate the increased use of non-traditional profit-based measures uh, in control action, for example, beyond budgeting. So beyond budget, budgeting is an addition in section A of the syllabus, okay? Okay. This is a very good summary. You can even take the screenshot. Section B of the syllabus, which previously was section C. Now this is known as section B of the syllabus. This is the area where there have been lot of inclusions, like the concepts that have been added here 
as you can say uh, <coughs> data silos uh, plus you can say different methods of data analysis which includes descriptive diagnostic and predictive analytics you can see here uh, the next point is text image video voice analytics okay and sentiment analytics these are new additions in the syllabus and then you can see uh, discuss the ethical issues related to information collection and processing like uh, you can see the use of black box algorithms and large scale data collection and mining so you can see here that these are the additions to your section b area which means there are small 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 concepts that are now part of the syllabus and obviously i will be covering these i will be updating my lectures not only according to syllabus but also now according to the examination way that is 80 technical marks and 20 professional marks so there are certain changes that you will feel in the online lectures and i must say that people must take admission now in afm apm or triple a just because of the changes that are accept uh, that are applicable you can't take risk on your own you have to build those skills in yourself so make sure that you must enroll in these papers and don't go with self-study okay so this is section b of the syllabus now section uh, d section d of the syllabus a major change is corporate failure is no more part of the syllabus this is a this is a major change so now corporate failure will not be covered and will not be tested anymore in the examination okay fine after the four basic syllabus sections a b c d comes section e this is again the same section e i'm talking about uh, of professional marks where there are four uh, professional skills and behaviors required first communication <laughs> now previously previously uh, communication was part of report writing uh, those who have given APM before they know that there was a 50 mark question in examination uh, where there were four professional marks uh, for the way you write the report the way you structure the report uh, the way you communicate the way you use the language language is very important how clear how much clarity is there so communication here means <coughs> the clarity the way you write the answer the way you structure the answer the way you use the headings and the subheadings and all and the way you use the right appropriate language professional language okay language is something that will matter here so communication here means the similar thing that you used to do earlier it's not a new thing but the focus will be now on communication just because that this is one area where examiner will be looking the how you have done the structure uh, what is the layout of the answer plus clarity the way you wrote the answer and the language how much relevant language you are using relevant words you are using any anything that you are writing extra anything that you are writing which is out of the context anything which is not according to requirement means your communication is not appropriate are you getting my point so if i say communication it means writing according to the requirement uh, the language should be according to that there should be clarity and the structure should be clear so this is communication skills which is more or less covered previously as well when it comes to 50 mark question okay <laughs> then comes analysis and evaluation now this is a skill which 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 is a common one which was also be indirectly part of the previous apm exams because this is something that you expect in every question of apm so again i would say this is something which is not very uh, uh, different or new because you used to do this now analysis if i specifically give you clarity of the word analysis so analysis means that by using the data by using the information you do certain workings you you do certain working you f through those working you figure out certain facts through the workings through the numbers you come up with certain facts and on the basis of those positive facts 
and on the basis of those negative facts i repeat through the numbers through the data through the information you do certain calculations whatever are needed to support your answer so through those observation through those calculations through that analysis you come up with certain facts and those positive facts and those negative facts then helps you in your evaluation see evaluation so to draw a conclusion to come up with a judgment you need certain support material so analysis is that support material by using the information data you 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 come up with the uh, calculations and the facts and those facts are then used in your evaluation on the basis of those positive facts and negative facts as i said earlier you come up with the conclusion and that's evaluation so honestly speaking this is a very common work you already used to do in apm and this is one skill that is tested in all the questions of apm all the question whether it's a 50 mark question or it's a 25 mark question this skill previously used to come and again will be tested here okay so that's analysis and evaluation that is uh using the numbers coming up with numbers facts and things and on the basis of that evaluating it skepticism is a is a common word you have used you have, you have heard about this word a lot in your audit and assurance exams or advanced audit and assurance paper skepticism here at apm level again now what is skepticism a questioning attitude skepticism means a questioning attitude which means you can't trust you you should not trust anyone and you should not blame anyone you should not rely on anyone you should not think okay he is the most trust trusted person in the world and on the other hand you should not see him as a thief so you should have a questioning attitude that is you have to remain attentive you you have to be in the middle of the situation and that is skepticism which means that you are not saying that management is totally correct and you are not saying that management is totally wrong you have to do the research and you have to be vigilant here you have to open your eyes and you have to always ask questions maybe this is wrong maybe this is right maybe this is according to the things maybe this is not according to the situation so here skepticism in apm what skepticism is doing in apm this is the question now listen in apm skepticism now in apm I, and this is this is more relevant to the students who already have given paper before <laughs> they know uh, in APM uh, there are certain statements in the question where uh, stakeholders uh, are, are are sharing their thoughts or beliefs about the company okay or there are certain information given in the question so skepticism means that you have to keep a questioning attitude that okay if anything that stakeholders had mentioned in the question anything which shareholders has mentioned in the question you have to think okay is this right or not maybe what they are saying is not right maybe what they are thinking is not right maybe what mindset they have uh, uh, in the question is not according to the organization so that's the skepticism maybe the information given in the question is not the appropriate information are you getting my point which means maybe the information is not according to uh, the situation so this is skepticism now a very common example is there are so many models that you have in apm and again i'm talking to the students who have given the paper before because they have to shift their mindset those who are new obviously they don't have any issue they will understand with time like performance measurement or balance scorecard now if you're implementing performance measurement or balance scorecard into a situation so what skepticism is the data given in the question is that data good enough obviously is that data good enough according to the model or not or is is that model totally applicable for a situation maybe the model is not suitable here so the question here is 
the questioning attitude that should come in your mind maybe the things given in the scenario are not itself good enough keeping in mind the situation of the company so that's the skepticism that is what you have to keep in your mind the possibility that maybe the 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 things given are not right okay normally people don't have that courage to say that what you have presented in the question uh, people assume that this is this is this this will be perfect no maybe examiner wants to test your knowledge uh, your your skill of skepticism that whether you are able to pick whether this is appropriate or not so the word here is appropriate or not so again skepticism is a skill which is needed here uh, and I think this this usually used to be tested in APM earlier as well, but now this is a prominent skill required. So to check whether things are appropriate, you need to have a questioning attitude in relation to the information given in the scenarios. Okay, so that's skepticism. Then comes professional acumen. Now, what is professional acumen? Professional acumen means that you cannot give or write suggestions or recommendation out of the box. If it is a service business, you cannot write general points that relates to manufacturing. Okay. Normally people, what they do, they come up with suggestions. Normally people come up with suggestions or recommendations that are too general in nature. Every scenario that you are given in APM is, is a one that is, that relates to commercial viability. It's not something out of the box. It's practical world examples. Uh, those are commercial examples which means your suggestions your recommendation should be according to that you cannot write in general about it your answer should consider the professional acumen which means reasonableness whatever you are writing should be reasonable according to the examination situation should be reasonable according to uh, the business should be commercially acceptable thing okay because you can't come up with a point which is not applicable in the practical world because every organization that is running is not an isolated organization it is connected with the external environments so any suggestion any recommendation which is totally not acceptable which is not doable i would say which is not doable you can't write those so professional acumen means that your your suggestions recommendations should be reasonable should be should be something commercially viable uh, because these examination scenarios that are given to you are those which relates to practical examples and relates to all the organizations that are commercially uh, commercial based organizations okay so you cannot write anything which is out of the box which is not a doable thing that will not score the marks okay so that is professional acumen and i hope this is clear to all of you so i've given a brief idea that your communication should be professional language structure analysis that you have to do and you have to evaluate based on the facts that you figured out skepticism questioning attitude should be there maybe the information is not good enough in the question you can say that plus professional acumen whatever suggestions whatever comments you are writing should be viable one should be reasonable one should be according to the situation and commercially usable one okay so that's the four skills which are needed here now in apm where i would say that this second one and first one was very much tested uh, before as well and all the four were somehow tested but now these have become more prominent and you have to really take care of these four professional skills uh, which has a weightage of 20 marks okay so i hope my explanation of these four skills is clear what do you think guys yes or no is there the clarity yes or no the way i explain the difference is this clear understood easy It did took a lot of effort, but I hope I have made this clear. Okay, great. Perfect. So, 
we'll further discuss this once we start our session definitely i have to incorporate these in my past paper questions now and i will do uh, uh, these incorporations in my past papers lectures in my live classes so that you are able to understand the difference very well okay now now i'm telling you a very interesting thing that how these 20 professional marks will be tested in your 50 mark question and 25 mark question so listen the exam will be again 3 hours 15 minutes okay same uh, section a of your exam which is of 50 mark this is a compulsory question compulsory question this question is normally tested from your syllabus areas of section a section b and section c so 50 mark question comes normally from the syllabus areas of section a b and c that i uh, showed you earlier okay this will include 40 technical marks 40 technical marks and 10 professional marks okay so 20 professional marks that are introduced 10 marks relate to section a 10 marks out of those relates to section a are you getting my point everyone 10 marks relate to section a clear out of the 40 technical marks 10 mark relates to section a got it so Previously, four professional marks were there in section A. Now, there are 10 professional marks with the four skills that I just discussed earlier will be part of your section A now. Okay. And in, in this, all the four skills will be tested. That is communication skill will be tested. Analysis and evaluation skills will be tested. Professional acumen will be tested here. And uh, uh, the fourth one was professional skepticism. So all the four professional skills will be part of these 10 marks, will be part of these 10 marks. <laughs> wow, good. Okay, understood guys? I hope no issues. So section A of your paper, which is of 50 mark, it's a 50 mark question, will come from syllabus area A, B and C, having 40 technical marks, 10 professional marks, which will include all the four skills. Got it? Coming towards section B. 25 marks, 25 marks uh, question. There are two questions of 25 marks each. You know this. Okay. Now, each 25 mark question will include 20 technical marks and 5 professional marks now. 20 technical marks and five professional marks. I'm sure you're getting my point. So if it's a 25 mark question, 20 technical and five professional marks. Same for section B question one, same for section B question two. Understood? Done. Now, very interesting thing. Section B, section B question will include minimum two professional skills. Now, it could be communication and analysis and evaluation or it could be analysis and evaluation or it could be uh, professional skepticism or it could be analysis and evaluation or and it could be uh, the fourth one, professional acumen. So, in section B, minimum two professional skills will be tested and I personally believe one skill is compulsory in section B that will come and that is analysis and evaluation. This is the core thing of APM. Along with this, either communication will come or either I can say professional acumen will come or I can say uh, professional skepticism will come. Okay, Because analysis and evaluation is the core thing of APM. So in section B, uh, minimum two professional skills will be tested. Whereas in section A, all the four professional skills will come. Okay? Done. Now, moving forward, section B, as I said, two professional skills will come and I think one will be analysis and evaluation and other will be out of the three. Section B, one question. Section B, one question. That is 25 mark, one question will come from section D. Okay? of the syllabus will come from section D of the syllabus. So one question of section B, uh, this is fixed, comes from section D of the syllabus. Don't get confused by these sections, okay? 
I am saying 125 mark question, 125 mark question will come from section D of the syllabus and the other 25 mark question can come from any other syllabus area that is A, B and C. But 125 mark question uh, will come from section D of the syllabus okay, that I showed you earlier. So these are very important things for you people uh, for planning your APM and this is how I will also teach the things as well. So I hope this is clear to all of you. So professional marks breakup is clear. 20 marks, 10 marks goes to section A 50 mark question and uh, the remaining 10 marks go to section B 25 mark question where 5 marks for the first 25 mark question and remaining 5 marks for the next 25 mark question. So this is the split of 20 professional marks. I hope I have made this all clear and it's easy for you to understand.